Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a wine from Burgundy. A wine I hope is going to be a lovely example of the grape variety involved, which actually is Aligote. The wine comes from Domaine Guillaume and Jean-Hugues Guizot, and it's a Bourgogne Aligote from the 2022 vintage. The estate is in Auxerre and it's run by a father and son team, Jean-Hugues the father and Guillaume his son, and they Domain dates back to the 14th century. In fact, their cellars actually date back to the 11th century, so there's there's quite a long history of winemaking here. Evidently, Jean Hugues himself started working in the vines at the age of 16 and has a reputation for attention to detail and of being one of the leading producers in the Sombre Appalachian, where they, they are. In fact, he's earned the sobriquet the Pope of Sombre. I'm not quite sure what papal status grants you in the wine world, but and, um, that is what I'm told. One of the areas in which they've been sort of leading in their Appalachian is that in 1993 they became entirely organic and they're now certified both as organic and as biodynamic and they've been seen as a, a leading biodynamic producer in Burgundy. Sombre is not a particularly well-known region of Burgundy. The story goes that actually really should have been included in the classification of Chablis, but evidently in the late 1800s a significant attack of phylloxera hit the area and therefore they weren't included, despite the fact that their soil types are under underlain by the classic Kimmeridgean limestone that you see throughout Chablis. So the climate and soil would have seen them fit into Chablis, but they weren't classified as such. The Guizos, however, do see this as an advantage because it means they're not bound by the type regulations that the higher profile Chablis Appalachian would give them. So in fact, as a, a, an obvious example of this, the fact that they're able to grow Sauvignon Blanc and Elegote as well as Chardonnay is something they see as an advantage. For most Burgundian domains, Elegote is a simple, quite crisp, normally quite sharp wine, meant for drinking quite young, a crisp, dry white, it's a relatively neutral grape variety. It's not unlike Chardonnay, but tends to not be quite as full-bodied. However, there are some really good examples. Some top producers make it. And Guizo are, are reckoned to be a, a very good producer of Aligote. So here the family have uh, six and a half hectares of vines on relatively steep slopes with chalk subsoils. So altitude giving another cooling influence. As I say, they're farmed organically and biodynamically, and they're certified for that. They keep yields low and tend to harvest quite late. So we're looking at really quite ripe fruit. Everything's hand-picked, it's distemmed, it's very gently pressed using a pneumatic press. Fermentation goes on in stainless steel tanks. The guizos allow indigenous yeasts to induce the fermentation. The wine stays in tank, it undergoes malolactic conversion and then ages with its fine leaves for a period that isn't specified in the notes that I've seen, but you'd imagine sort of somewhere in the region of um, probably about six months, maybe slightly longer. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? See what we make of it. First thing I'd say, you have a relatively pale colour there, almost with hints of green. Swelling it, the wine has 12.5% alcohol according to its label. It's not particularly throwing tears. It's a dry wine, so there's no sugar, there's not particularly high alcohol to make it viscous and make it stick to the glass. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? Gosh, there's a, a real greenish hint to that, almost almost like a sort of a very green peach, if that makes any sense. Not quite cut grass, but sort of a, a slightly sappy green. And then behind that, there are some sort of mineral notes. I'm not, I'm not really sure that you can smell sort of chalky notes, but certainly there seems to be a a mineral elegance to that. Maybe maybe wet stones is a better description. Behind that, maybe some touches of creaminess, but very delicate. Let's taste. On the palate that certainly has the fresh acidic bite that I'm expecting to get from an Elegote. The wine is light to medium bodied, it has a little bit of roundness, in fact 
the roundness is increasingly becoming evident in in terms of the sort of the lees notes so maybe maybe this has seen more than six months aging with lees because there's a lovely creamy slightly yogurty very very slightly butterscotchy and slightly toasty note not necessarily toasty from oak but perhaps toasty from the fermentation note there's a roundness and the creaminess is not just a flavor it's a texture as well so the lovely burst of initial acidity is is actually good and crisp and it is a minerally quite distinctive note to the acidity however it's not the tart green apples malic acid that you might sometimes find as I say, the entire of this wine went through malolactic conversion. There are delicate notes of white peach, very much on the delicate side, not through to a rich, darker, more ripe peach. There's some high-toned blossom notes. There's certainly some lemony crisp acidity, and overlaying all that, Right through to the end, actually, is this sort of lovely creamy texture. The alcohol at 12.5% is not intruding on the finish whatsoever. It's allowing the fruit to last well. And actually, as I was hoping, this is a beautifully balanced wine. It has some nice length, it has reasonable intensity, but it's got really good balance. There's that zippy acidity, but the acidity is not taking over. It's not tart and harsh, and I don't feel it's stripping the enamel from my teeth. And the freshness is balanced by the roundness of the lees aging and those sort of slight toasty notes from indigenous fermentation. And everything is lasting really quite nicely. So yes, that was Guillaume eh, Jeanu Guizot's Bourgogne Allegote. An interesting wine. Classically, you would think that maybe uh, Allegote would be served with cassis to make a kia as, a, as an aperitif. But I, I think that would be a real waste for this wine because much as I enjoy drinking a kia, this is a wine that would be lovely to drink on its own. I don't think it has any great ageing potential. You could happily keep it a couple of years. But a very nicely, very carefully made wine with lovely balance. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the, the tasting of interest. If you've enjoyed it, do please press the like button below. Do consider sharing it with your friends. We'd love to hear any comments you have about the wines, the tastings we're doing, or anything else related to that. Do consider joining up and following us on YouTube. That would be fantastic. More importantly, however, do please make sure that you make some time to come and watch another one of our tastings in the very near future. Hopefully we'll see you then. Bye for now.